Hi folks, customer sent this part in and said, how do I cam it up to turn it on a CNC lathe in Fusion 360? Well, let's walk through it. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So I opened up the file and I don't know why, but it opens in sculpt mode, switch to model. I'm part is in a component, which I like, it's a good thing. So I'm say we're good to switch into cam. Now I'm going to use a template, just like we talked about in last week's Fusion Friday. I will, I will admit though, actually it was the Wednesday widget, uh, but I will admit that I've not used this lathe template in a while because I recently decided that I hate lathes, so we won't be using them anymore in the future. Half kidding. Uh, first though, I'll click a new setup. Really important here, change the operation type to turning. And I'm going to switch into stock. And I'll say, oh, let's hear, actually, let's go back to setup because what I need to do, see how it thinks the z-axis is the wrong way? No big deal. I'm going to check z-axis is this face. Oh, actually, this outside works as well. There we go. Uh, and that'll be good enough. I don't need to do anything else. If there were any features around this, like milled features, I would want to check spun profile. And sometimes I do that anyways if I'm having a problem. But we should be okay here. So under relative size cylinder, I'll just add some radial stock of 0 .05, 5, and we'll say backside stock, let's say, is um, 0.5 inches to hold on to it in the chuck. Click OK. So I've got a setup. I'm now going to right click, create from template, SMW lathe. And again, I have not used this in a while, so we're going to find out what's in it. Nice thing about lathe templates is if I right click and generate toolpath, so much lathe stuff is feature, uh, is 3D model based and not selection based. So a lot of it actually works off the, just from the template. So facing, take a look, uh, it's facing it correctly profiling it it's profiling it correctly uh grooving did something but that's probably bogus uh the drilled hole i gotta pick the hole so i'll just click that and we can poke under heights i see how it's just fl it's flush with the bottom i want it to poke all the way through so i'll say drill tip through bottom with 0.2 you know, plenty of extra clearance because I'm, I'm probably going to, I am going to stick a boring bar through there. So actually I'm going to go even further because I, I want that uh, plenty of clearance. Uh, boring actually already worked as well. Isn't that amazing? Threading, there is none. And party. So look, folks, I will be the first to admit that uh, there are some things in Fusion 360 lathe cam that could be improved or built out further. You know, HSM was really known for its milling, less so its turning. But two things. One, how awesome was that, what we just did? And number two, my buddy John Grimsby was using this on his beautiful high-end lathe to do some pretty awesome, complicated stuff. Uh, and that's not to say that it's perfect, but he's got it working, and that's freaking awesome. His stuff is actually perfect. But... Um, so, uh, if you've got a better lathe cam, uh, by all means, go ahead. But for those of you that need to make Fusion work, we're getting it working. So, watching my simulation kind of casually. I don't like that little pecking there. No collisions except right. That's odd. Oh, yeah, it's too big for that parting tool. Okay, well, that's no big deal. Um, actually, that's a good call. We probably would not part this off. We would probably flip it around and uh, machine the other side. So I will re update the stock to reflect that. We'll say there's only 0.1 inches on the back side. And I will delete my part, regen this. Okay, so where are you gonna, <laughs> when I joked earlier about how we're no longer using lathes because we hate them, it's just funny because I'm a mill guy, I really am. And uh, lathes are so much easier to crash in my humble opinion. Profiling there, we zoom in. Looks good. Remember the control point. The control point is the, I'm, I'm sorry, back up a second. Looks like the toolpath is crashing. See how the blue line fades in and out of the part? That's not a crash. It goes back to what's called the control point. And if we edit our tool, let's see here. You can see, we zoom in, somehow it'll let you zoom in here. I don't know how, but you can. The control point is the 
uh, intersection of the two points of the tool itself. Darn, I wish I could. But those, there isn't actually a point there because this tool has a front nose radius. So the toolpath represents where that theoretical point would be, but because the tool, it's like a ball end mill. Think about it that way. Um, that Basically, this toolpath is okay. I'll prove that to you by turning off the stock. Great little tip, actually. I learned a uh, card here to Jeff JJ's webinar presentation on 3D milling toolpaths, which was freaking awesome, uh, but something I didn't know and had never paid attention to, which is show points that shows you things you can click on so if i click on that you can see that that's actually a roughing so that's the that point there represents the intersection of this and that line um so oh here we go there's my cleanup pass so if i go uh let's see i'm guessing that's past the point yeah so if i click this last one right here should be able to watch it Mm -hmm. Is that the last one? Let me turn off my part. Oh, there we go. I want to click the one that's even further hidden. Pause this. Here we go. This guy. Now I can click on that point, turn my part back on, and hit play. And boom, you can see we're not crashing. We're following the radius of that tool. It's another reason I hate lathes. I'm joking. You've got to be much more conscious of correctly modeling the inserts or the tools that you are using. Okay, enough of that. OD's good, and our groove, excuse me, uh, grooving we don't need. That's just uh, not needed here, drilling the hole. So profiling, we're going to really call this ID bore. What is it doing? Um, it's coming up here, which I don't want it to do. Uh, sometimes, is rest machine already check? Sometimes rest machine works, sometimes that, oh, that did. Um, that's great. If that doesn't work, the other thing you can do is use your heights to avoid it from going out there. So I, what I like to do on lathe heights under radii, change these to diameter. Actually, I think if my template did that, we'll post this file uh, with the template so you can use this SMW lathe template. Uh, but by choosing diameter here, I can control, uh, in fact, the clearance diameter needs to be smaller. And this diameter needs to be, so that's the inside radius, it needs to be smaller too, because we're using a half inch drill. So I'm gonna say 0.45. And outside, looks like that hole is uh, 0.59 radius, so 1.2 inch diameter. So I'll say 1.22 and click OK. And that's going to tighten in the eligible range of that toolpath. It doesn't look correct though because if I simulate and I jump forward to my drill. Oh yeah, it is. This parts. I thought this part was a lot bigger than it is. It's funny. That's a half inch drill so you can see that the part is relatively small. What I want to do is make sure when we start our boring op right here that we're not incorrectly rest machining. In other words, that the first boring pass isn't way too big. And you'll see it's not. That's perfect. And the bore should also, if we fast forward to the end, should go ahead and take into account that radius. Um, so I might actually want to widen up my bore to that, which is the 1.3. So that way the boring tool can handle that fillet. Radii, um, you could do selection. I normally don't with lays, to be honest with you, and, and an offset of 0.01 um, kind of gives it a parametric linking if you ever to change, were to change that. Oop, doesn't like that. Never mind. This is one reason why I don't even try that. Diameter, 1.31. Oh, come on. I just I just hit undo. Radii. Oh, I was, I'm sorry. I was doing the wrong radius. So let's do outer radius selection. This, my fault. Offset 0.1, uh, 01. 
My apologies. Cool. So now we get a control point that starts just outside of that, which should give you a good blend for that. So now the whole big question on this part, how the heck do you do the inside here? So this is what's called a face grooving tool. If you Google image search face grooving tool, you'll see some examples. They are guys like, uh, yeah, this is, I was hoping to see, here we go, see one in the part. So the, it's like a boring bar or a parting tool, but the radius is part of the tool. So you have a, only a narrow range of diameters that you can use with them because the curvature has a minimum and a maximum uh, diameter that it can cut without rubbing. That's the whole issue. Now, take a look here. Hit I on your keyboard to measure. Hold down Shift to measure the right way infusion here and here. This is only 0.187 deep. So we can probably try cheating and using a standard uh, parting tool and kind of plunging in. And then once we plunge in along here, kind of peck plunging, we should be able to come back and move along here because this isn't very deep and it's not very narrow. In other words, it's wide. So there's a great trick in the world, in life, when you don't know how to do something, which is Google. So I Googled Fusion 360 face grooving and the results came up. The first thread was no good. The second thread looks promising. And a big thanks and shout out to Steinworks for this file, uh, which I haven't even opened yet, but I assume this is going to work. And folks, you gotta learn to help yourself. I don't know everything. I don't even come close to everything. The Fusion 360 form is actually great, really is. So check it out. I uploaded this file. If we take a look, profile, uh, normal groove for that one, which is easy. And then boom, face groove. So this does two things. One, it gives me the cam uh, operation for it. Most, more importantly, possibly, is it gives me a tool. Because that's the problem with lathe stuff, is this stuff can be a real bear uh, to even make the tool sometimes. So let's start simple, baby steps. Right click, copy. Actually, you know, let's look at the let's look at the selections first. So inside grooving. Okay, so that's interesting. That that makes sense. Front to back. Geometry, rest machining, no selections. Interesting. Um, some clearance stuff. Rough the very passes shouldn't matter and linking shouldn't matter. So that's pretty simple. Um, huh. Okay. Let me see if I can go hero mode. Normally I don't recommend this, but let's use this tool in this file and see if I can make this on my own. Turning, uh, shoot, was it groove? Groove, yeah. Turning, groove. So tool, the nice thing is because that other file is open, it's called face groove, I can grab it from right here and that has that 90 degree angle. And yeah, we might change that tool, but let's get the toolpath working first. Uh, that looks good. Inside grooving, don't care about front to back. He had rest machining on. Uh, I will not worry about the radii or passes yet. Just click OK. Yeah, shoot. Nothing. Axis retract distance greater than axis stock high. Okay, before I worry, let's just copy his in and see if that works. So right click, copy. Right click, paste. Control G to generate. Uh, what's my error? Oh, a different um, error. So let's see. It was the to do with the radii. So uh, or model OD, we'll say, with no offset. Inside would be diameter of 0.5. Clearance would be. Um, stock OD with an offset of 0.1. Click OK. OK, same error. <laughs> OK. I got it. Super easy. So let me control Z. Super, it really took me two tries. Uh, I did it off camera because I thought it would take me a while. Radii. So think about it. The outer radius is a stock OD, this light blue line. That's fine. Inner radius was the stock ID with no offset. So that's that dark blue line. And that's like, it's basically a line and it's not a, 
a circle. It can't come down to that center zero point, and it doesn't matter because all I really want to focus on is this area here. So stock ID of, let's say, an offset of 0.6 opens that up to a real circle. So now the eligible work area is the area between the blue, dark blue, and the light blue clearance. I'm just going to open that up a little. Click OK. Look. Look. So now I don't want it to go out here. That's easy. Radii, outside radius will say the diameter of um, two, nope, four. Okay, f f I oriented it on the right. 4.2, that puts it right there. Inside, I can actually have it start a little bigger. So we'll say 0.8, perfect. Click OK. Uh, isn't that amazing? Uh, amazing. So let's simulate it. And for the record, I've never once done this before in my life. How cool is that? Uh, jump forward to the groove. And hit play. Okay, so we might get some collisions because of the tool. Right, so what we would need to do is have a tool with a longer insert on it. What I don't know, I'm going to pause it and see if I can fix the tool. Unfortunately, I got the tool. I'll show you what I did. New lathe tool. I want it to be in this file here. And I did a parting uh, or grooving tool. And then under setup, I rotated it. Because that's how I would do it. I would hold a grooving tool in the lathe like that. Um, we'll call it 11, something big here. And I don't think it's going to work. And I, somebody else, can you guys chime in in the comments or how does you get this to work? Oh, maybe it's just because it's upside down. Hmm. Is that all it is? I'm not good with this. And, and I will admit Fusion is not necessarily great at some of the options here. Um, zero? 270? No. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder if that's all it is. The, this tool should be flipped the other way. Clockwise. I don't think that's as right, necessarily right. Unsupported tool, yeah. I don't know. Um, let's see, if we switch back to tool three, does it work though? That's a good test, by the way, or five. Make sure. You could lie to it. You could model your insert in a holder that's actually not this one. Um, and so you could make it work, sort of hacking it that way. Just, just be careful and obviously make sure you've got enough clearance uh, between the tip of your tool and the backside and then make sure you're not gonna rub or make sure you're not going to create bad geometry as you machine it because of the profile of that insert and how it's interacting with your workpiece. But that's inside face grooving. Folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Take care. Let me know if you know a better way to do this or a better way to model this tool. Otherwise, take care. See you next Friday.